Okay, so here we have the Phantom X8. There's a couple things wrong with mine. One is uh, a few of my pads don't quite work. Uh, they don't have the full dynamic range of the velocity, so I, it's probably just dirt inside, so I'm, I'm gonna clean those out. And the screen also has a bit of dust in it. You can kind of see it here. So I'm gonna take this out and spray it with, um, with some, uh, some, uh, some air spray. So first of all, we have to flip it over and take the screws out. So I'll show you that next. Okay, I have, it, I have it flipped on its back. Now, now you'll notice um, that I'm doing it on a couch. That's so I don't damage the pitch bender or any of the other knobs. Now, in order to take the top off, I have to, to remove the following screws. This screw here, this screw here, these four, or five, these five, and then all the screws along the bottom here. Okay. Do not remove these. This part's gonna stay, this part's gonna stay in, okay? Okay, with those screws removed, I can flip the unit back over, and you can see you can open it up almost like the hood of a car. But you have to be very careful because these two flex cables that go to the keyboard don't quite have enough travel. Actually, there's three of them here. So you need to take all three of these out here. Now you'll notice for this one here, the way it comes out is you need to pull this tab up and then you'll take the wires out like this. Okay, so you can see I've separated the top from the bottom. And here you can get in and see exactly how the hammer action works. Uh, you see there's a, little, there's a little weight on the end here that you know swings up. So and you can see here, padding, and you can see the actual button that's pushed that does the velocity. Now, of course, there's a bunch of dirt and dust in here because I've had this thing for about 10 years. <laughs> Played it a lot. So I'll probably want to go clean that out. Go to the other side, you'll see where the aftertouch is hooked up. Channel aftertouch, here's the, uh, here's the sensor along here, uh, underneath the keyboard. And then it feeds back and plugs into the top. Here's the upper half. You can see here's the power supply, switching power supply. Here are where the pads are underneath. Here's where the LCD screen is underneath here. More buttons and switches. And then you've got the jack board here. It's got all the jacks on it. That's why it's called the jack board. Here's your uh, PCM CA uh, board. And then underneath here you have the main circuit board down here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm because I'm, I'm interested in accessing the pads, I'm going to take up this one here and clean those out. Okay, so I've taken out the screws here that hold <clears throat> the board that has all the pads on it out. So I can just gently lift it up. There's a cable where it's attached here at the bottom, so I have to be very careful with that. Also, if you're having trouble um, getting it back in, this dial actually, this knob, you know, comes right off and you can put that back on after. There's probably going to be a bunch of dust around here, around most of these areas. This is where um, dust falls in, of course. And here are the pads themselves. And the resistive part. So I'm going to clean this with some, with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol and uh, also an air duster. So, so I've used the air duster to blow out all the dust and everything else, right? So now what I'm going to do is simply take some rubbing alcohol, some Q-tips, and clean the contacts. I'll show you how I do that. So here I have a Q-tip with some, some rubbing alcohol on it. So I'm simply going to clean off these contacts here. The alcohol will just use the dry end to wipe off. The alcohol and you'll see I got a lot of grime on there. Okay so that's all cleaned and I put it all back together. Now I'm gonna take the screen out and air it and blow out some of the dust there. So the first thing as I've done is taken off the cable for the backlight inverter, the power. I'm gonna take this take off this cable and also take off this cable as well and then we'll undo the screws 
in the back here as well and pop this right out, okay? Okay, so I've unscrewed the panel and just gently lifted it out of the way. And uh, what I'm just going to do now is blow the air, the air canister on here and on here. Be very careful not to touch this with your greasy fingers, otherwise you'll have to clean it again. And then I'll just put it all back together. All right, that's all back together. One other thing I'll mention is if any if if if, uh, if any of your buttons stop working, you'll need to replace those. And if the keyboard's not too old, you can simply order them directly uh, from Roland. If yeah, uh, it. If Roland doesn't have them in stock, though, you can always just find a part that's about the same fit and get it from, like, you know, DigiKey or something like that. And, you know, in that case, you'd have to unsolder them and change the switch out. But uh, that shouldn't be a big deal. All right, getting ready to put it back together. So <clears throat> I plugged these three ribbon cables back in. And you'll see there's a little channel here on the bottom of the metal where this piece of wood is going to fit into. So I'll slide that forward and we'll be on our way.